Hello everyone, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Keisha and today I'm going to be doing a bookshelf tour. done a couple of bookshelf tours in my I guess booktube tenure <laughs> but I wanted to do one because I recently reorganized my shelves I've unhauled a lot of books I've hauled a few books and I'm probably gonna haul some more as well but I wanted to go ahead and take you through my shelves because I recently did a reorganization in my previous video which was where I wrecked my reading vlog and I also wrecked my bookshelves so I have done some reorganization since then and I thought what better time to show you all my shelves these actually used to be just solely my red shelves but now there's a little bit of a mixture so it's a little bit not completely tuned to what I'm used to or what I love but I think the way that I have done my shelves now is going to help me read my unread shelves so I'm going to take you through this bookshelf that I have here in my main living room I also have a TBR cart as well as a book tree and then in the other room I have a giant bookshelf so we're going to go through all of those and I hope that you enjoy so this is currently the top of my bookshelf in my living room and I don't have a ton of books up on the very top. This actually used to house all of my favorite books of all time. But now I've decided that I wanted to put my fantasy books up here that I still need to read. And these are actually some very highly anticipated ones. If I had to pick which one I was looking forward to the most, <laughs> it's probably a toss up between The Kiss of Deception and Carval. But I think probably Carval is my most anticipated. It may end up being a little bit difficult to see this top shelf here because I do have some snowflake garland, but basically these are all of my all-time favorite books. I have them organized where I have my favorite classic over here, which is The Secret Garden. So I have all of the editions of that here as well as The Secret Garden Devotional. Then I have a couple of books that I'll pull out for you here, but I do want to show out of all of my Secret Garden editions, I do want to show the beautiful editions that I have because they're really pretty. So we'll go ahead and pull the easiest ones out first. So I do have my Secret Garden Devotional this classic edition of the secret garden it also has sprayed edges and there are illustrations throughout next up i have this boxed edition that is absolutely stunning so this is the front of the book it also has purple sprayed edges this is probably i don't know it's so hard to pick my favorite edition but this was so pretty and those are the end pages. And I also believe, yeah, there are some illustrations throughout. Next up is this edition, which is, I believe the first edition, like special edition that I started to collect this one from. Next up, I have the Seasons edition of The Secret Garden. They only print 10,000 of these. And I happened to find this one at a used bookstore I'm so glad that I got it. It also comes with a bookmark. And there are also some pages throughout that have beautiful artwork as well. Then I have the Mina Lima edition. 
these are always so pretty you can like go through and there's little different like pop-up elements or different interactive elements throughout which I find to be really fun and lastly I have this box edition as well and inside the box you have a beautiful pink cloth bound cover I just love all of my editions of the secret garden again it is my favorite classic there's also some artwork in this one I also love Charlotte's Web, but I don't own quite as many of that one, but I just wanted to share this collection with you. While I won't be fully pulling all of these books out, I did want to highlight Memorizing Scripture by Glenna Marshall, as well as Social Sanity in an Insta World and Every Woman a Theologian. These books, these three books, are books that I read in 2023, and they are some of my favorite Christian nonfiction books of all time, so I highly recommend those. Again, all of these are favorites, so I could say something about each one of them. It's really hard. <laughs> the Letter Tree by Rachel Fordham is the most recent favorite. My favorite romance of all time is The Off-Limits Rule by Sarah Adams. Um, you all probably know this by now, but Sally Hepworth is one of my all-time favorite authors. Then I have some of my favorite thrillers going into some of my favorite young adult books. Belladonna by Adeline Grace is my favorite series so far in young adult, but I love all of these. They go into some young adult romance. And then it goes into some middle grade historical fiction, which I found that to be my favorite historical fiction, like age area in all the historical fiction that I've read. And then of course I have some spooky middle grade over here, as well as some graphic novels that are middle grade. My favorite spooky middle grade of all time right now has got to be The Nightmare House by Sarah Allen. I highly recommend this one. It is not going to be for everybody, but it has a lot of allegory and it has a lot of like faith tie-ins that I found to be really great. It also has wonderful anxiety representation, so I highly recommend this one. Next up, we have My Shelf of Cozy Mysteries. This does have a mixture of cozy mysteries that I have read as well as ones I have not read. Also, this stack in the middle is just a bunch of classics that I have. So I wanted to put those in the middle to break this up because I don't quite have enough cozy mysteries to fill my shelves just yet. Some of my favorite cozy mysteries are Death Overdue by Allison Brooke. I also really enjoyed Curse the Day by Annabelle Chase. If you have been on my channel any amount of time, you've probably heard me talk about Buried in a Good Book by Tamara Berry quite a bit. The first book in this series is one of my favorites of all time, though I will say the series did dwindle down a little bit for me. I've also read Live and Let Cha by Brie Baker, and I've also read A Dark and Stormy Murder by Julia Buckley, which is actually my favorite cozy mystery of all time right now. So definitely check that one out. I'm hoping to get to the second one pretty soon. I've also read Homicide and Hardcover by Kate Carlisle. I had trouble getting into the second book, but I want to keep it just in case. Murder on Cape Cod by Maddie Day is another really good one. And then again, we're breaking it up with some classics here. I've read these top two. This is my really pretty edition of Charlotte's Web that I love. There is another edition that I want, but there's not very many special editions of this that I've found. So let me know if you know of anywhere I can find a cute one. I also, again, have a special edition of Anne of Green Gables. I hope to read Rebecca this year. I say that every year, never get around to it. And then here are some other classics. This little guy right here actually used to belong to my grandfather on my mom's side. And when I was little, I just was fascinated with it, loved it a whole lot. And it's been around for a while. It's just one of these little ducks. And it just reminds me of him. So that's why he's sitting on my shelf. And then here are some more of the cozies um, that I have read. Here are some that well, here's one that I've read. I haven't read all of those, but um, Crime and Poetry by Amanda Flower. This is one of my all-time favorite cozy series, and I will say that Pros and Cons was possibly even better than this one. So, um, I've also read Peaches and Scream by Susan Furlong, and then this is not really a cozy. This is kind of out of place, but a cozy mystery author wrote this under another name, and I just needed somewhere to put it, <laughs> but I don't think, I feel like I've read more than what's on this shelf. Maybe I passed up some, but those are my cozy mysteries. 
And then on this bottom shelf, I have all of my middle grade books that I need to read. So I did end up mixing in some books that I have already read if they were a part of a series. So for example, I have read Winter House by Ben Gooderson, but I haven't read the other books in the series. And then I've also read Matilda and the BFG and George's Marvelous Medicine by Roald Dahl, but I haven't read the other ones by him. I have some classics in here that I need to read. And then of course, this whole section we're moving into now is a lot of spooky middle grade. Um, I have read Watch Hollow and Night Books there on the end, but I need to get to the sequels to both of those. Then we have my TBR cart, which is a little bit of a mess in comparison to how I used to have it. It used to just be like my top priority reads and everything, and now it's a little bit of a mix. So if I go back up to the top here, I do have TB or TBR to be read. Um, this is where I like to keep my monthly to be read. Um, so right here is mostly like my monthly for this month. Some of them are not here right now because um, they're off about the house. But these right here are graphic novels that I still need to get to. So I just put those up there because I only have four. And then I have some bookmark cozy corners. And then I have some bookmarks in here. I have all kinds of bookmarks, honestly. Like, these are some of my favorites. If they have a tassel, they're my favorite. They're automatically a favorite. So, let me show this one. This is a bookmark that my sister-in-law made me. She cross-stitched it, and it is absolutely precious. I hardly ever use it, though, because I don't want to mess it up. But that one is in there. I also have this one. have some Christmassy ones. This is one of my favorites. My friend Gwen got me this one, and I use it for my Revive Book Club picks. My friend Yvette made, well, the first couple that are popping out. This one has Jovi on it, and this one has The Gaggle of Witches, which is me, Gwen, and Cavi, and that's just super cute. Um, if I move up here, here's another that I recently got from Gwen. Really excited to use it this summer. Here's another one that Yvette made. She is just so talented with watercolor and any type of art, honestly, I'm just telling y'all. Um, so yeah, there's just some random ones back here for book clubs. Um, I feel like you guys would probably enjoy seeing these, so I'll pull out my Taylor Swift one. So my favorite albums are Lover and Reputation, and so those are the bookmarks I have for those. Magnetic bookmarks, and then I have some book sleeves back here. Again, my sister-in-law, she is so crafty. She knitted this one, or crochet, knit, crochet. I don't know, you guys would probably tell me better than I know um, about it, but they're little strawberries. And then I have a couple, this one's from Happy Go Lovely Sleeves. And that's like my cozy one. It's like my granny cozy one. <laughs> I love it. Um, Elizabeth got me that one. It is a little fall dachshund one. This is like my two bookathon sleeves for my spooky middle grade readathon. Rachel also did those at Happy Go Lovely Sleeves. So we have a spooky kitty and a witchy toad and they're so cute. This one I think is from Book Bow. It was one of the first book sleeves I ever got. And then I have a couple more from Happy Go Lovely Sleeves. If you can't already tell, she's my fave. <laughs> and then behind the TBR books, I have some just like leftover books that I had nowhere to put. So I have some basically mysteries or thrillers. That one's The Curse of Misty Wayfair by, um, what's her name? Jamie Jo Wright. And then let me see if I can get on the corner here and show these sides better. The Therapist, The Shadow House, No Bad Deed. And then this one down in here is The Other Woman by Sandy Jones. Here's where I just have some like overflow TBR books. So this section is kind of like historical fiction that I need to read, except for this one. I did read this. This is um, Guernsey Literary and po Potato Peel Pie Society. Um, and then going through here, we have a couple of horror and thrillers that I need to get to soon. So I just didn't really have a home for those because I don't have a lot of those genres on my shelves. So I put those there. And then my bottom shelf is gonna be top priority Christian fiction and Christian nonfiction. So I have, this one is one of my um, 12 books by 12 friends. Jordan picked A Voice in the Wind by Francine Rivers for me to read. And then Lauren picked Hans, Hans Feet on High Places. So those are two of my 12 books by 12 friends for this year. Again, I have a couple fiction and then going into some nonfiction here. I have read Chasing God and Gods at War. Those were really influential books in my faith when I first like 
I, I don't want to say when I was first saved because it wasn't then, but when I was first kind of like revisiting my faith as an adult. So I wanted to revisit those now. And then I have some more, some devotionals, and then I have some Bible studies by the Daily Grace Company as well as one by She Reads Truth. And then if I spin my TBR cart around, on the back here I have some markers and then I have a couple of coloring books. So I have the Autumn Harvest coloring book and then I have the Modern Cottage Collection. You're probably going to see my shadow in this part, but this is my book tree and I've recently redone it. It had a little bit of everything on it, but I've decided to dedicate it to be my rainbow fantasy, not rainbow fantasy, rainbow romance shelves. So I have them all in rainbow. Some of these I've read, some of these I have not. So I have read One Day in December and Love in Other Words. And then I'm really, really, really anticipating A Thousand Heartbeats by Kira Cass. Also, can we just take a moment for this cover? It's stunning. So that is those. And these are so hard to keep in line when I move them around. So I'm going to try not to do that a ton. But then I have, I've read After I Do, One to Watch, All I Want for Christmas. Out of all of these, my favorite would probably be After I Do. I'm also really anticipating reading My Phony Valentine soon. And then we have, let's see, which ones of these have I read? I have read The Dead Romantics, and I think that's it. But this has a lot of anticipated for me on here. Just Don't Fall by Emma St. Clair. This book took the world by storm last year <laughs> for clean romance. Also, When in Rome, obviously I need to get to reading more Sarah Adams. And then also this book, Very Sincerely Yours by Carrie Winfrey, I'm very excited about because I've read two of her other books and I think she's a favorite romance author for me. So very highly anticipating those. And then let's see, I've read One True Love's Part of Your World, Love in Other Words. So I need to read these too. I'm very look, much looking forward to Dear Henry Love Edith. This is a Christian romance. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Um, out of all these, gosh, my favorite, that's hard. I feel like people expect me to say this, and I guess I will, but this one has had a very special place in my heart for a long time. My reread just wasn't very great of it. <laughs> and then, let's see, we have In a Holidays that I've read, Every Summer After, and that's it. I'm really itching to get to Courtney Walsh's A Cross Country Wedding because A Cross Country Christmas is one of my favorites of hers. I'm also really looking forward to getting to Better Than the Movies because I've heard really good things about Lynn Painter and obviously another Sarah Adams that I'm really looking forward to getting to. Then on this shelf, I don't think I've read any. Yeah, I have. Okay, I've read You've Reached Sam by Dustin Tao. This also has a really stunning cover. And it is a really sad story, but it was a really good one. Um, the one I'm probably most anticipating on this shelf is The Rom-Com Agenda by Jane Dinker, which I should be reading in February. So hopefully that will be a good one for me. Then on this shelf, I have read almost all of these. Well, I guess half. I've read Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers, Juniper Bean Resorts to Murder by Gracie Ruth Mitchell, and Dash and Lily's Book of Dares by Rachel Kwan and David Levithan. Out of all of these, that is really hard. <laughs> I think Juniper Bean's probably my favorite, but I do need to do a reread of Redeeming Love because it's been many years since I've read it. Juniper Bean was a really good one. This author is one to look out for. She also has another book in the series called Heidi Lucy. It's like a mashup between a cozy mystery and a rom-com. So highly recommend. And she also just announced another new book where it's like this girl ends up like a genie comes out of a teacup or a teapot or something and I don't know it just sounds really cute and then lastly this is my romanticy shelf because I want a designated shelf for that for now because I don't really have anywhere else to put these but I did read these hollow vows and these twisted bonds last year and I really enjoyed them gave both of them four stars and then I also recently read Forgery of Roses by Jessica S. Olson which I haven't heard a lot of people talk about and I ended up really enjoying that one as well and it's kind of like more of a murder mystery with magical realism and that has a little bit of a romance very very good so those are the shelves that are in my living room and now we're going to go ahead and move on to the next room but first, can we take a moment for this cute little face? Hi, Joey. <laughs> what are you doing? That's her fox. And she knows his name. You're adorable. 
Next up, we have this giant bookshelf, which I forgot to mention the previous bookshelves. Um, the ones that I showed you were built by my father-in-law and this one was built by my dad. So I have some crafty dads <laughs> and I'm so appreciative of them for, you know, building some family heirlooms for me. <laughs> but my mom put together this puzzle on top with the cat and the books. And then this first shelf is where we're going to start. So this has been basically the same structure for a very long time now and I don't see a need to switch it up. This is my Christian nonfiction shelf and it is done in rainbow style. It has a mixture of some books that I have read and some books that I have not read. So it just kind of stays there and when a book calls to me, I will pull it out. I also have some little Funko Pops here. I have a Niffler and then, oh my goodness, what is his name? Momo from Avatar, which is so fitting because I'm also wearing Avatar pajama pants as we film this. Not that you guys wanted to know that, but Avatar is a very good show. And then of course I have Coraline. She's a fave. And then my dad got me this penguin and the little, I don't really know where that little bottle of hot sauce came from, but that's definitely telling of my husband. So just a few of these. Let's see if I can point out any. Crazy Love is Really Good by Francis Chan. Find Your People by Jenny Allen was pretty good. Um, what If Love Is The Point by Carlos and Alexa Penavega was really good. They are both, um, you know, celebrities who profess their faith. And I really appreciate that. I know that's hard being in Hollywood. Um, let's see. I have Rooted by Banning Liebscher. Girls with Swords by Lisa Bevere. I've read some of, but not all of, and really enjoyed what I read. Own Your Every Day by Jordan Lee Dooley. This was the fir first arc that I ever got before I was even in the book community much. I was obsessed with her. Um, let's see. There's so many good ones up here. Fashion to Rain by Chris Valentin, Unglued by Lisa Turkhurst. Blue Like Jazz by Donald Miller is a very good, interesting read. You Are Free by Rebecca Lyons is an all-time fave. God is Good by Bill Johnson is another all-time fave. There's another fave up here somewhere if I can find it. I think it's behind here. Stronger Than the Struggle by Havilah Cunnington is another great one. Then this next shelf is mostly books that I have already read. And then I just have them in order by genre. I also have that cute little book nerd book setting out front there. And then I have that little owl mug that's been there for forever. And then I have, this is actually my husband's. It was a gift, um, I think, from my sister-in-law to him. And it's just a little coffee grinder antique little thing. And it's really cute. And this is from our 10-year wedding anniversary trip to Fort Walton Beach, Okaloosa Island, Florida. And there, there's some sand and shells in there from that trip. So I have my Jennifer McMahon collection here. I've read all of these except for Burntown, my favorite. Okay, so I haven't read these in a while and my reading taste has changed, but keep in mind, keep in mind that, but my favorites at the time that I read were The Winter People is probably my top favorite. If you're looking for something like super spooky, I feel like these two, The Invited and The Drowning Kind are like the spookiest of hers. Um, and then I have some horror here. And then my Sally Hepworth collection. I've read these two. I haven't read these three yet. And then moving into some mystery thrillers. And then some classics. And then we get into a little bit of magical realism or fantasy. And then moving on, it's mostly fantasy for the rest of the shelves. For those of you who may be wondering, yes, I still own the Akatar series. I really enjoyed the first two books, especially in the series last year. And I've recently rewatched my vlogs and I really do want to read this one, The Court of Silver Flames, but I know there's so much smut and it's probably not gonna be as great for me because of that, but I don't know. It has a special place in my heart though, just know that. <laughs> And then we have my red middle grade shelf. So I have read all of these books on this shelf. I do have them organized a little bit as well. I just wanted to give you an overview first. I definitely have a lot of graphic novels. Like there, there's all of my graphic novels that are not, you know, favorites that I have on another shelf. So this side starts with Spooky Middle Grade, which you all know is my favorite. Behind the Bookcase is a really good one. Sorry about the focus, guys. This is one I highly recommend, as well as Midnight at the Park, whoops, Midnight at the Parkley Hotel by Fleur Bradley. This is a great one for if you like murder mysteries or clue type stories. 
I also really loved Field of Screams by Wendy Paris. Allie Malinenko is a great author. <laughs> Lindsay Curry, I have a lot of her books. I'm pretty sure I own all of her books at this point and I have read all of these ones. I have like one or two left that I need to read. I have a couple of classic horror on there and then we're moving into more fantasy books, some Christmas reads, some sci-fi and dystopian, then some like general fiction or classics um, in there as well. And then I move into my Neil Gaiman collection because I love some middle grade Neil Gaiman for sure. And then again, we have my graphic novel collection, some notable ones here that are not on my favorite shelf, but that you should just be aware of if you're interested. Um, the Sleepover by Michael Regina, Song of the Sea. Um, let's see. Peculiar Woods. I don't feel like most people even know what this is, but you need to look this up and read it, especially if you like the Brave Little Toaster. That'll give you some nostalgia. Guts. I mean, all these are so good, though. Honestly, they're on my shelves. So I really like them. Um, the Okay Witch, the first one, is like one of my faves. The Ghoul Next Door, the first one, is one of my faves. Battle Royale is a really good, like, Great British baking show, rom-com type YA. So, yeah, so many good ones. This shelf is my series, basically, mostly middle grade series. So, I have read the Percy Jackson series, and I've read the first book in the Heroes of Olympus, and then we have some, like, just companion little books about Jimmy Gods. And then this is my collection of the Giver series, which I've read all but the last of, and my Chronicles of Narnia series with this beautiful necklace that I absolutely love. It, I've never wore it. It just hangs there with my series. I've read all of those except for the last two. You can tell too because you can see the crack spots and then the last two don't. So I need to read those. Um, then I have the Spiderwick Chronicles and then the entire series of Unfortunate Events, which I actually haven't read all 13 books of. And I was going to do a reread because I've read the first like uh, maybe 10. Maybe. I don't know. I've read somewhere between 7 to 10 of them. But... I just decided not to revisit it as an adult because I don't think I'll love it as much as I would have as a kid. But I love the series with Neil Patrick Harris on Netflix. And then this is kind of hard to get to because I have my reading chair right here. But I put the Clackety series right here as well as the Casty Blake series. And then I have my Harry Potter Illustrated Editions. The bottom shelf here is a little bit less exciting. So I've just got some school books, some random business books. Um, and then I have some random like little C.S. Lewis books and then I have all of our Bibles. Well, they're not all here, but this is our Bible collection as well as some commentaries. And then at the very end over here, you can barely see, um, there's just a couple of oversized books over here. So I have like Matilda, a little Christmas book, um, the Spiderwick Chronicles, a spooky stories book. So that is my bottom shelf. And that makes up the entirety of my book collection. And those are all of my bookshelves and my books. I did go ahead and count, which this is like not going to be an exactly accurate number, but I have somewhere between 125 and 130 books on my physical TBR. Now, I did not count all of my Christian nonfiction or um, like I have some books on my shelves that, okay, example. I tried to read Kate Carlisle's second book in the series and I kind of DNF'd it. I might come back to it. I might not, but I still want to own it. So like I didn't count that in my TBR, but I also didn't count that in my red. So if I have any books like that, I just didn't count them the same way. So ones that are actively on my TBR that I'm trying to get to, it's 125 to 130, which is, <laughs> that is such a good number in comparison to what it has been because it's been over 200 in the past. Then I counted up the total number of books I have on my shelves, which again, this is going to be a little bit of mix because I have such a weird collection. So of my fiction books, I did count all of my fiction books. This is read and to be read. I have 388 fiction books on my shelves total. Then I counted my nonfiction books. The only thing I didn't count was a couple of like school books or business books that are more like my husband's books or I didn't count like maybe, I think I already said school books and I didn't count our Bibles. So not including those things, we have 97 nonfiction books total. So 
just in case you're curious about book stats and all that stuff, that is what my collection looks like right now. And if future me wants to look back and see how many books I had, this is how many books I had in January of 2024. So I hope you all enjoyed getting a little bit of a peek into what was on my shelves. You'll have to let me know um, how you organize your shelves. Like, do you organize alphabetically? Do you organize color coordinated or by genre? Again, I used to do this a whole lot different and I have kind of wrecked my shelves a little bit, but this is how I organize mine now. So let me know how you do yours in the comments below. But if you have nothing else to say and you just want to leave a comment to say hello or just be supportive, you can leave a book stack emoji and I hope that you will come back in my next video I think that's probably going to be my February TBR that is likely what is going to be next so thank you so much for stopping by I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are and I'll see you in my next video bye friends mm -hmm.